Hello and welcome into another edition of State of the Sun Devils, a post-game edition of State of the Sun Devils. ASU loses to U of A in the Territorial Cup men's basketball game alongside Jesse Morrison and Jake Anderson. I'm Jeremy Schnell and it's really, it was all about three-point shooting, especially in the first half, Jesse. I think they only Here made go, one Spears. or two. Here we go. <laughs> and and shout out by the great Doug Tamaro of uh, he's Arizona excited. State Media the, Relations. The Steelers are still in it, apparently. They are. They're still alive. They got to win out, and they need a lot to happen. And they need my Dolphins to lose. Um, Three-point shooting, Jesse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, both teams shot poorly from three, but U of A did make more threes, and, you know, I just feel like if ASU had made three, four, five, six more three-pointers in this game, it would have been a whole different ball game. They had good looks, especially in the first half, but just as the you know as the game went on, they really could have needed threes, especially when they got down by like nine in the second half. Um, so I, I don't think that was over all the difference in the game, but it played a big part. Uh, the final score of this one was 69 to 60. Kind of low scoring to what we're used to from U of A. ASU's defense probably to blame for that, but uh, specifically in the second half. What did you see from ASU's defense to get them back into that ball game, Jake? You saw it right out of the gates with the halftime adjustments. They came out swarming them. Full court pressure, on ball defense, forcing U of A to have to take the ball up the full court. And then they weren't able to make their shots like they were in the first half. So ASU defensively was able to create some havoc. They picked up the tempo offensively and really got the game flying. I mean, they came out, and I think it was a 19 4 run to come back to open up that second half. It seemed like forever U of A had like in. 47 points or something on the board, or yeah. 49 points they had forever. Yeah, 49, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, it was something along those lines because we went into half. It was uh, quick math here, Jesse. Uh, 25-28 uh, let, Let's take a look we're at the box. 45-28, so it, it, they were stuck on just four points that they had scored like uh, seven or eight minutes into that second yeah. half, which is you don't expect that from this U of A team. No. Number five no. in the country, only lost one game coming into this game. Uh, they Only the second time all season, they've been held under 70 points. They've been averaging over 90, second best offense in the country. Here's what I think the real difference was in this game overall is just, number one, ASU just didn't get to the free throw line as much as U of A did. Uh, ten, yeah, ASU shot 10 free throws and U of A, yeah, U of A shot 28 free throws in this one. So, and I, I didn't really see, I mean, there, there were missed calls in this game, but I didn't really see missed calls when like ASU was driving to the rim because I just didn't see them driving to the rim that much. And then also I think the other big difference in this game was just missed shots in general from ASU. That includes three pointers. And in the first half, they were missing little floaters and shots that should have gone in. And, you know, I think, again, it would have been a whole different ball game if they had made some of those shots and then been able to get to the free throw line. I would have liked to see them try to get to the free throw line, try to get the U of A bigs in foul trouble. Um, and then you, you saw some ASU foul trouble that I think was also a big part of this loss because, you know, Des Cambridge had to sit for, Frankie Collins had to sit for a large portion of that second half. And then Devin Cambridge, the game was already pretty much over at that point, but he did foul out unexpectedly late. because it yeah. seemed like, because you look at des cambridge and, and then frankie collins they get five fouls early in the second four half. fouls four excuse me four fouls early in the second half and they have to come out and, and then Dev, out of nowhere devin cambridge has five fouls and, he, and he's out of the game I, yeah. I think specifically in the first half though asu was able to to get to, to to the lane and i think that was by design by u of a's defense to get to kind of get us uh, asu to go toward tubelis and balo you think that was a good decision by U of A to say, hey, beat us from three? And I think it's that you hit it on the head, and, and what Jesse was talking about in the first half, ASU missed their first 14 threes. They were yep. 0 for 14, or was it 0 for 13? 0 for 13. So then that was it. The, one, first, one for the 14th three was the first to go in, and that was Alonzo Gaffney, of all people, to yeah. actually make that shot. Mm -hmm. So I, I, the, and that was all in the first half. They only had four free throw attempts compared to U of A's 15 in the first half. And like yeah. you said, Jeremy, it was ASU was driving. ASU was then kicking it out, and they had open looks. I mean, mm -hmm. like, if, if you make three threes, if you went three for 14, it's another six points, right? Like, mm -hmm. and it's just the little ones to – and they were they were down by two in the second half. Yeah. They came yeah. all the way back. Yeah. You know, if they had been able to hit some of those threes, 
then you know you, a you got a 50 game. 49 but again coulda yeah. shoulda woulda they they didn't win and to go on the free throw disparity because asu didn't attack the lane as much in the first half they did in the second half and that's where they got up to 10 free throws but they didn't attack the lane in the first half so those fouls were all you know away from they weren't shooting fouls so it didn't mm -hmm. get them to the line and and last thing i'll say about the free throws is u of a came into this game 13th in the country with 25 free throw attempts a game it's exactly what they did ASU was only down 17 when they went into the half, and it's weird to see ASU. They only made two three-pointers in the second half. They were able to come all the way back. They were down by three at one point. Down to by be two able to, at one point. Down by two at one point, and to be able to come all the way back from that deficit without making any threes seemingly, I, I think that's a big testament to what this team will be able to do if those shots start to fall. Um, the defense is there. You saw it today. They played against probably the best team in the country when it comes to scoring. Yeah, 100%. JMU exists. <laughs> the best team in the country when it comes to scoring. And they held them to 69 points. So, I mean, a lot you, you can take away a silver lining from this game. It's that you saw, again, that ASU's defense can go up against elite competition. Correct. They can hang with these teams like a U of A. Um, I think the San Francisco game is a total outlier. And I think the Texas Southern game is a total outlier. I think that they're going to be one of the top four teams in the Pac-12. Um, I, I was impressed in the second half. I still think there's some poor shot selection and, you know, some issues on offense that they need to work through. Um, I do think it is a much improved offense than what we've seen in past years from Bobby Hurley teams. So I do want to reiterate that. Um, but again, this game gave me confidence that ASU is a good team. I think this, this was the game that I really wanted to gauge where they were. Not the San Francisco game, not the Creighton game, not any of those games. Uh, Michigan, they're okay, but they're not, they're not U of A. They have a lot of four-star and five-star guys. Justin. But they're not U of A. <laughs> um, U of A has three or four NBA guys on the floor. Jesse brought up a specific point that I wanted to talk to you about, Jake, and that was the shot selection, specifically toward the end of the game. When they, when they were in, within striking distance, they wanted to put up that three. They wanted to either go ahead or tie it up or just they kind of started pushing toward, I don't know, like eight, nine, ten minutes left. And that's when U of A started to pull ahead a little bit more. Do you think that is something that's fixable with this team? So it's kind of a, a two-parter. So the way they got back into the game, I feel like once it became a one-possession game again, they kind of were like, okay, well, we're back in it. Let's do what we do, mm -hmm. not what we have been doing the last eight, nine, ten minutes that has Great been point. working. Um, but going forward, I think it's going to have to come with, with in-game reps of – Who's going to be the one to just – and I, we all thought it was Dez, mm -hmm. but who's going to be the one to say, like, it's five minutes to go, we're down by two, give me the ball? Shout out Luther Muhammad, too. He made two free throw line jumpers that, that were that were big and key at key moments as well. Um, it's so weird with Dez, though, because he made a three today that I was like, no, don't shoot that, and then it went <laughs> in. So he's like – the no, don't shoot that. It goes in, guys. Shooter's gonna shoot. So no, I, no, no. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how to. I don't know how to evaluate him very well. Um, so the, I mean, I, I, to me, I'm just like he can shoot whatever, but the other guys can't. So that's just my opinion on that. Uh, talk about the two players that really stood out to me today. It, it was Tubelas, uh, 21 points, uh, nine rebounds, the, the four fouls. That was tough toward the end of the game because he was trying to play defense down low on Washington and Devin Cambridge when he was in the game. But I thought he was fantastic out there today, especially down low. But, I mean, he can shoot it, and he didn't even try to go out and shoot it today as well. Duke Brennan. That's another one who really impressed me yeah. today. Yep. Coming out, freshman down low against Bialo and Dubelis, who is seeing – so Kellen also called him the Pac-12 Shaq. When you see him in real life, seven foot two sixty, he's a monster. Yeah. And Duke Brennan actually played really well for being a freshman that is everyone's undersized against Bialo. He only had three fouls as well. He Bialo. was getting, yeah. Yeah, he only had three fouls. He had three. Uh, but, Duke, uh, but Duke, Duke Brennan Duke, was hitting boards. He was getting Duke Brennan six point six rebounds in, yeah. in only fifteen minutes played. Exactly. Like that. That was pretty good. Very good shift by Duke Brennan today. Yeah. It's not hockey, Jeremy. A good shift. <laughs> he put in a good shift. Um. Okay, get me distracted here. Um, I thought ASU handled Tubelas and Balo pretty well, given the circumstances. What I liked was the rebounding margin was not, like, 
what I, ex I expected U of A to win like 52 to 28 and it wasn't like that. That was good coaching, I think. That was that that yeah, was a good I job mean, by Bobby. He said he I think he basically said when the ball goes up in the air, find someone Bob go Shemal. go I th there were a couple guys, a couple of the guards who would just stand behind Balo and Dubelis and they just wait for it to go over their heads. Yeah. And they'd get the rebound in, in that scenario. Yeah, so. I, I thought that they did a pretty good job on those guys. Obviously, they still got what they got, but I think that given how good they are and the circumstances, I just I don't think that that was the big reason that ASU lost. I don't think that U of A really did that much to make U of A. I mean, to make ASU lose this game. I think it was mostly just ASU missing shots. And if ASU had made more shots, they they would have won this game. And that kind of, that kind of sounds stupid, but but. Jake and I were talking about this. You the score goal, more points. The goal of basketball <laughs> is to put the ball in the basket. ASU did not do that enough, unfortunately. They didn't do it more times than U of yeah, A did. They didn't do it more times than U of A, so therefore they lost. <laughs> what was the final percentage from the field for ASU? Is it I'm on it. Jeremy's got his, uh, his I got my stats. I know, I know it was below 35, but was it in the 30s? 36.2. Oh, damn. So it yeah. ended up finishing out really well. They were 25 of 69 from the field. They shot more shots than U of A did today. U of A shot 53 shots. It was the free throw margin that really won U of A the game. And the threes yeah. at first. It's just the psychological part of the beginning. Because U of A wasn't missing. They were shooting like 50% yep. from three yeah. in the first half. And, you know, that's what I was like, oh, this team goes inside. They're a post team. And then they start the game, and it's like for Kreese <laughs> shooting threes. And I'm like, oh, okay. He they're, didn't have too good of a game either. No, I, he kind of disappeared you know what in the I second saw? half. You know what I saw from Kreese? He, when uh, Devin Cambridge was taking the, the flagrant free throw, he mm -hmm. stomped on the floor in the, like in the middle of his ba uh, when he was going up. I don't okay. like that. That's not good sportsmanship. Why would you do yeah. that? I mean, I call, it, I call game. it gamesmanship. Rivalry game. I don't mind it. Uh, yeah. can, can we get to Did the, he get uh, caught? <laughs> also, Warren Washington was just talking normally to, to, um, to Balo. Uh, they were standing a uh, in the lane, the free throw was about to be taken. They're just talking, laughing, having a good time. And to, uh, Ballo smacks him on, on the leg and says, you know, good game. It was toward the end of the game. The ref comes over, yells at Washington, says, that's a warning. I'm like, they're, <laughs> they're literally laughing, having a good time. I'm like, calm down. The this Pac is Pac-12. I, I, I will say that the Pac-12 refs did uh, want to be the center of attention in a few <laughs> a few times in this game. You can't go a full game without Pac-12 refs, you know, wanting to create start the ref show. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of uh, Bobby Hurley today on the sideline? There were times that I thought he could have been, you know, drawing up plays instead of arguing with the refs. <laughs> uh, but I think he had a case for a lot of them, and I think he did draw up plays when he needed to. Specifically on the loose ball fouls, where it, they were going for rebounds, and the, the play, like, there was a Frankie Collins, the Frankie Collins, or it was, um, Duke both Brennan. Fra there it was, was one on Frankie it was, on the baseline. It was both Frankie Collins and Cambridge both got a foul down uh, getting, going for a rebound. And, like, at the end of the day, like, the ball went out of bounds. It was going to be U of A ball anyway. Like, so I kind of see Bobby's point yeah, on that. I, I, I thought that he didn't argue too much. Sometimes I think he's argued And, again, too I don't much. think, they, I think he needed to. I thought no, the rest had I, a pretty good game. And, again, I thought one of the times that he got really animated was when ASU was down big. He was trying to motivate the team uh, and maybe get a technical foul. He, they didn't give it to him. <laughs> but he just, like, went around the, the, uh, the circle of refs and just <laughs> went to argue to each individual one. Um, and I think that was him just trying to motivate the team. And I think that doesn't work in the NBA. Uh, but in college, I think that – you know, these are college kids. So to, to have your coach, you know, have your back like that, I think that does kind of motivate your uh, your team. Now, now, now uh, again, like in the NBA, I don't think it would have changed the Suns 2018-19 season if Igor Koskov had gotten a uh, technical foul. <laughs> uh, Jake, final thoughts after after this one. I So we were obviously texting during the game, and in the first half when it's a 17-point margin and ASU looked terrible, it was kind of like, damn, I guess ASU's got a lot more work to do than we thought. But then we see this second half performance, and it makes you wonder, if we can get that for 40 minutes, maybe you're not as good as a U of A. I'm sure the first you're, half of the second half is what we're talking about. <laughs> ASU's not as good as U of A. We knew that coming yeah. in, and we know that now. But I think, as Jesse said earlier, after U of A, I think ASU could be in that top four. 
maybe even that top three if they can find an, the offense, get that to start clicking. ASU is a good basketball team. They're not a great one. I don't think they'll make a, a great run in the tournament. But Why not? They're, I think this team is made to do that is the thing. Their defense shows a run. What's a run? And that's and that's where you, and that and then we get into the debate of your expectations because a run for that's Kansas easy. is different than a run for ASU. Sweet sixteen, it's easy to get to, right? It's not that hard. Yeah. I've said it's not that hard. <laughs> Plenty of teams do it all the time. Um, I think sixteen of them do it a year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, my point is, this team has talent. This team has capability, and I think this is probably the best team we've seen since twenty twenty. And that team, again, is the one I keep talking about because we'll never know what could have been. And it, that's what is frustrating, especially as ASU alum. Well, we're going to have to find out what te- what this team is going to become. They have you don't want my final thoughts? Ah, okay. Jesse, what do you want? What do you got? I, I think that ASU is, like Jake said, a good basketball team. They're not a great basketball team. I do think it's unfortunate that they weren't able to pull this one out because it's going to be way harder to win in Tucson than it would have been to win today. So that kind of sucks. I think they're looking at maybe an 0-2 against U of A this year, which is a bummer for ASU. But going forward, I think, why can't they contend with the UCLA? Why can't they contend with this year's Utah team, uh, USC? It, I, I think that I think that this team is up there with the top of the Pac-12, and they just need to shoot better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and they're, they're halfway to basically becoming tournament eligible where they'll be yeah. they'll be re- like they're le- they got 11 wins so far this season and if they get to 20 22 yeah. they should the, be they, they need a couple quad one wins one last fun fact mm-hmm. 12,584 in attendance tonight yeah, today pretty good season high it's, nice it's also pretty good because the students you know all on vacation right now jesse's very oh, upset okay okay uh, not 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 at the students no i'm not upset at the students no I'm mad at whoever scheduled this game because, yes, there was a very good student turnout for it being break. But when this game has been during session, there are like twice the amount of students. So don't do this again. And again, when I went down to, to U of A on Thursday for the women's game, there were ten, like 10,000 people there and like no students. Yeah. So they, they need to stop with the rivalry games during break. End College it now. football playoff happening right now as well is not helping. In terms of today's uh, event, I don't, I don't think that matters that much because the rest of the arena was pretty much full. Yeah, yeah it's like it's, it's just mostly if the, if the students were here. It My point been is, yeah. if this is yeah. the biggest game in town, which it wasn't today, eh, for an Arizona person, this was yeah. probably the bigger game. Now, a casual should, sports fan picks the semifinal. Correct, most a yes, casual sports yes. fan, but most of the people a casual in this, sports fan had a choice Most of today. the people who were going to come to this game came to this game. If they're fans, yeah, yeah. yeah if it, My like, point is, today. We had less people wanting to come to the game because they weren't here for school. And then you had another choice, which is a very highly prized game if you're a neutral fan. Mm. Also, I feel bad for the students that were, you know, back east or up north or whatever because this is the most fun sporting event in my why can't opinion. They, why can't they be west or, or, or south? You, you know what? Or, I, you, or, I, or, I, it's an example, Jeremy. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for them. This is my favorite sporting – this was my favorite sporting event to go to as a student – was the ASU U of A men's basketball game. I think it's the best atmosphere that this school can provide. Um, it gets so loud in here when cool. everyone is standing and everything. Sad, it, the start of the second half, yeah, my ears started just, to hurt. Yeah, it it's great. Good. It's great. The uh, U of A ASU chance when they start to go, in, like that hurts your ears. Yeah. Because so you, yeah. you can't understand, you can't make out words. It's just noise. It, it's, yeah, they just start yelling back and forth. <laughs> and that's what makes this so awesome. Uh, this rivalry is just awesome. Um, I love the going back and forth between the fan bases. Uh, it's it's just fun. It's exactly what you want out of college sports. And it sucks that, you know, some of the students that are in different parts of the country can't attend because it's on break. Well, uh, that's going to do it for this edition of State of the Sun Devils. Coming up next week, the uh, Sun Devils men's basketball team has Washington State. They're 5-9 and nine on the season. And also, they have Washington. They're 9-5. and five. So, opposite records for those two teams. The first game against Washington State, that's Thursday at 6 p.m. You can listen to that on the Arizona Sports app. And then also uh, the Washington game on Sunday, that's at 3 p.m. also on the Arizona Sports app. Jake's article is going to be up in just a little bit on ArizonaSports.com, probably already up as you're watching this. So go give it a click, give it a read. I'm sure he's got a lot of stuff in there. And read Dan Bickley's column. Yeah, and Dan Bickley also writing about this one. Read it over on ArizonaSports.com. You can follow us on Twitter, at AZ Sports Devils, and all the sports that you can find uh, for Arizona Sports will be at AZ Sports 
on Twitter. For Jake Anderson and Jesse Morrison, I'm Jeremy Schnell. We'll see you next week. Ciao.